Beef Research School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by the Beef Cattle Research Council. Okay, so, so AMR is uh, antimicrobial resistance, and that's when we've got uh, bacteria, whether they um, are bacteria that cause disease in cattle or cause disease in people, that are no longer susceptible to the antimicrobials or antibiotics that we would use to treat disease. Um, it is a concern in, uh, th theoretically, it's a concern in both human medicine and in uh, veterinary medicine, because if we have bacterial diseases that we can no longer treat effectively with uh, antimicrobials, um, then we've, we're, uh, we're at a loss to, to uh, treat humans or uh, animals with some of those diseases. So I don't think producers can so much prevent AMR as have responsible use of antimicrobials when they're using them for commercial production. Um, and that involves uh, working with a veterinarian so that they make sure they're um, using antimicrobials uh, appropriately for diseases that are, number one, of bacterial origin, because uh, antimicrobials aren't effective against viral diseases, that they're following the label uh, directions and, and dose and route of administration as part of those prescriptions. Um, in addition, and I think uh, this may lead more into some of the uh, common misconceptions about how producers use antimicrobials is that producers only use antimicrobials that are licensed by Health Canada's Veterinary Drugs Directorate for use in cattle in Canada. And so if we, if we re sort of restrict our usage to the things that are licensed for use, that's, that's part of the whole process of um, responsibly using antimicrobials in beef cattle production. So feedlots actually work, most, most feedlots that I'm aware of work very closely with their consulting veterinarian um, to develop uh, programs and protocols for when they are gonna use antimicrobials. Um, and sometimes if they had, uh, obviously for individual animals that have bacterial diseases, there's usually a treatment protocol that um, the feedlots would use under veterinary prescription to give antimicrobials as part of that treatment. Um, in addition, at times they identify high-risk groups of animals, and so then they may uh, treat that group as part of the, uh, uh, the overall treatment program as opposed to just treating individuals within the group. We actually work very closely with our producers in developing protocols, and we have data collection systems in place at the feedlot, and we're actually monitoring their antimicrobial usage on a daily basis as those records feed back into our office. We're actually providing feedback and working with the producers on a daily basis to make sure that the antimicrobials are being used um, according to the prescriptions that we've laid out to help prevent and treat disease. I, I think uh, there's two or three, I think, uh, relative to antimicrobial use in cattle that when I interact and talk with just general people in the public that don't come from an agriculture background, they're always surprised by, by they'll ask me some questions and when I tell them the real answers, they're somewhat surprised by that. Um, I think the first one is that um, most, most people um, believe that, that producers and, and beef producers just sort of use antimicrobials in a in a very unstructured fashion and kind of use them however and whenever they want, probably using them far more often than they should. And so when we explain to them that uh, producers actually have a very structured approach to how they go about working with their veterinarian to decide when and how to use antimicrobials, um, a lot of people are like, well, I feel, I feel a lot more, uh, I feel a lot better about that knowing that, that there, this, is, this is a process. It's not just, you know, it's not just, well, just grab a bottle and inject an animal with something. Um, I think part two is, uh, second misconception is that um, producers use all kinds of antimicrobials that, that come from all over the place and that there's no regulatory body that actually license, licenses uh, what antibiotics can be used and how they can be used. And then the third part of it is, is that there's actually withdrawal time. So that when we do use antimicrobials to treat disease in cattle, 
there's actually a prescribed withdrawal time, so there are no antimicrobial residues in animals that actually make it into the food chain. And that, that one's a real eye-opener for some people because they really don't, um, they haven't really thought their way through that, well, yes, when we do use them, then there's a withdrawal period prior to the animals entering the food chain so that we make sure there's no residues. Last but not least, the, the thing that gets a lot of the headlines in the press is, well, producers use antimicrobials for growth promotion. Well, most of the antimicrobials that we use in beef cattle production are used to treat and prevent disease. Sometimes that actually results in the animals actually growing faster, but certainly in beef cattle production, that's not the, that's not the predominant use of, of antimicrobials. So those, I think, would be the four biggest misconceptions. So absolutely, producers have a vested interest in using antimicrobials responsible for, for two or three reasons. Um, producers obviously realize the bigger impacts of antimicrobials and the fact that we share bacteria and, and um, uh, bacteria that are both cause disease and those that don't with human beings as well as with our animal populations. Two, antimicrobials are expensive. So there's no incentive to use them, yeah, it's certainly if we don't need to. Um, and, and three, uh, to, to, to go about using them, if you're going to be a food producer, then there's a ethical responsibility to society to produce according to the rules and laws of the country, and all of the producers, certainly that I know, uh, subscribe to that philosophy 100%.